The chairman of the Oklahoma Virtual Charter School Board says Governor Kevin Stitt rigged a vote to establish America's first religious charter school here in Oklahoma. Fox 23's Rick Marinon learned that chairman resigned after the board voted to approve the use of taxpayer dollars to fund the religious school. It was a vote that could shape policy over church and state permanently in America. In a 3-2 decision, the Oklahoma Virtual Charter School Board approved to allow the Catholic Church to use Oklahoma taxpayer funds to be set up for an online charter school, a move that supporters and opponents say will likely end up at the U.S. Supreme Court. But board chairman Dr. Robert Franklin said the governor's office rigged Monday's vote. I am surprised. I'm very surprised because that in and of itself if you look at the nuance of language of how um, people are supposed to be and the timing by which they're supposed to be um, duly eligible to vote, I think there may be a I think there may be a gap and an issue. Franklin is pointing to the last minute nominating and seating of new board member Brian Bobek, who has been following the issue as a private citizen, but just took his oath of office right before Monday's meeting. Bobek previously served on the State Board of Education. Retired Lawton Public School Superintendent Barry Beecham's term had expired, but Franklin says usually a member continues serving until a new nominee has been fully vetted. This is the tradition. We, we say they've served their terms. They're willing to either serve or not serve. Mr. Um, Beecham had said he was more than willing to serve if reappointed. Franklin said someone in the governor's office put in an express lane for Bobek, gave him talking points, and ordered him to vote yes. Oklahoma state law at issue in today's discretionary decision, namely section 3-136A2 of Title 70 of the Oklahoma statutes, does violate the free exercise clause of the First Amendment. Uh, of the U.S. Constitution. Franklin asked Bobek to abstain because he hadn't been part of the process examining St. Isidore's application. Bobek said no and said the state constitution violated the U.S. Constitution. Franklin said he never asked Beecham how he was going to vote on St. Isidore, but he said the speed at which Bobek was approved and seated disturbed him and believed it could invalidate Monday's meeting if someone argues in court some technical concerns about the vote. It's a little disconcerting that it could be a technicality. After the vote, Bobek left and Franklin resigned, saying he felt called to advocate on a different level for quality education for all Oklahomans, no matter their faith. St. Isidore is set to be started sometime within 2024. Within a year of this vote is when they are supposed to be up and running and ready to accept students. However, when it comes to technicalities and other arguments, including that possible Supreme Court case this could be tied up with, this could actually take a few years before we see any students enrolled. Covering news that matters, I'm Rick Marin on Fox 23 News.